Hey everybody, this is Jerichos and welcome back to Puppeteer. Last time we defeated General Rabbit and his crazy magic tricks. However, he still sent us back three years into the past to mess with some sort of clock. I guess we'll find out this time what's going on as we continue with Act 6 and enter Curtain 2. Our hero's rabbit chase led him deep into the chrono-illogical land of time. Meanwhile, the Moonbear King was on to the witch, whose own dark intentions still hung on the air. That's right. Esma Potts is behind all this with our side. Let us continue our adventure. And now the Moonbear King knows it. No world is complete without a clock tower, and the moon is no exception. But the hands of this clock are not used to tell time. They are used to shape children's dreams. Light and dark decide if it's a quarter to a nightmare, or half past a daydream, or ten till a rude awakening. To keep a stern watch over the clock, the moon goddess had chosen Mr. Pink. But that was before. When the white moonstone shattered, the clock spun into madness, and Mr. Pink went missing. Yeah, who knows what happened to Mr. Pink? I guess we'll find out. To bear or not to bear? Who is she, this witch who's after my moonstone? Why does she oppose me? She didn't have to steal Calibrus. She didn't have to pick on me like this. It's not fair. This is my moonsies. Nobody else can have it. Not that mean witch, that awful hag. Whoever she is, she's mean and, and I hate her. Have I seen her somewhere? Yes, that would explain it. Who is she? Where have I met her before? Wait. Yes, Weka. Of course. You're done, hag. Checkmate! <laughs> Kataro, look out! These cards are about to fold! Cushioning Kutaro's fall was a strange garden constructed like a maze. Primly precise hedges were prankishly preventing Kutaro's progression. Of course, Kutro had prudently come pre-equipped with the proper pruners. Okay, now something very important about this stage. Going forward, we're going to encounter a rather talkative bird. You're going to want to make sure to hear everything he says. When he starts talking, stop where you are, don't move forward, don't walk alongside him. Wait until he finishes talking before you move on, because otherwise you'll skip part of the dialogue and you may not even realize it. So let's go through and cut through the first bush. Really, I hope you're happy with yourself. I went through all that trouble to hide myself, but what's the point exactly? If you're going to march into my garden and mercilessly slip away at my disguise, I might as well be wearing a lampshade. I mean, I probably itch less, not that you care. And that is him. That's the bird. So you see, he stopped talking, now we can finally catch up. The instant he starts talking, though, stop moving. Uh, show a little gratitude? Kataro just, like, saved you. Do you have any idea who he is? <sighs> Lost soul, rightful bearer of Calibrus, hero of the moon. Yes, yes, all very obvious, very clear to the naked eye. But, you see, that's why I'm getting pernickety. You're being far too reckless. You probably ride your bicycle at night without a helmet. And do you really expect to defeat the Moonbear King like that, really? But never mind, what's done is done. Milk spilt, not crying, moving on. Corrective measures can be taken. Proverbial mop for the proverbial dairy disaster, yes. Now, introductions. The names at Galahagrid, Mulberry, times are wasting. Goddess appointed Warden of the Land of Time, Clock Tower slash Watchman slash General Manager of what we call Dream Time, etc. ad infinitum. I know, lots of information to digest, probably didn't catch it. Just call me GMT. It's a pun. Clever, you see. No, this is going right over your head, isn't it? Your mothers didn't read to you much, poor things. Forget it then. You can call me Mr. Pink. 
Yep, as you probably guessed, he is the Mr. Pink in question. So, move onward. Got a grub. And another. Kill them all as we go. Don't want to miss any. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Pink? Okay, so, like, why were you hiding in a bush again? Ah, must we go over every detail? Clocks ticking, sand trickling out of the hourglass, come on now! Ah, fine, here we go. Class is in session. Have a seat, or stand, or hover, whatever. Basically, this all started with dreams. The goddess, because she's rather smart, decided that there should be a certain parity, that means equality, in how we interact with children in their dreams, which of course led to the construction of the clock tower built by a watchmaker by the name of... For crying out loud! Can you just give us the abridged version? Ugh, you talk faster than most sane people think, and we've got a lot to do. Shameful, simply lamentable, the attitude of our young people today, shrugging aside the weighty implications of their history and heritage, demanding instant gratification, reading spoilers of movies they haven't yet seen. Dreadful, this kind of rapid culture death. Just give the Moonbear King the edge, you know? No, us dying of boredom will give him the edge. Come on, don't tell me the great Mr. Pink doesn't know how to be concise. <sighs> oh, get with the times! You're a bird. Don't you know how to tweet? 140 characters or less. Go. Yeah, he likes to talk a lot. So, move onward, and we'll get a little more conversation out of him. Also, we've entered a maze section here. Pretty easy, just make sure to wander around to kill all the grubs in the way. Oh, hey Mr. Pink, how's it going? First grub, couple more coming. Smash him, and I missed him? All right, fine. And this one, bullseye. Now, before you move onward to that slam symbol, head down to the left. You want to be careful, because if you fall... Oh, good, we got the 100 sparkle. It's actually dangerous down there, it will hurt you. So, don't fall, just grab the 100 sparkle and come on back. Hmm. What's it going like to say if I do this? Slam from higher up. No kidding. Up we go. And pound it. That clock controls when children dream. Stop. Only I can operate it in the goddess's absence. Stop. I hid from at MBK to keep him from using it for evil. Stop. 140! Well done! So, the Moonbear King is after your clock. Wait, what does he want with a clock? Can't he buy a watch? I have to explain that too? All right. 20 words or less. <sighs> He wants to permanently stop with the clock hands at midnight, but he needs me to do it. Right. That does sound bad. What happens if the hands stop at midnight? Dreamtime will be frozen at the darkest hour, never to flow again. In short... Yes, please. And that ends this segment. We got a grub here, kind of just wandering around. Kind of felt like just standing there letting him have some fun. But now we kill him and go to the left for the topiary action. <laughs> Trim it up a little. It's a roulette. Yep, another one. Give me something good. I want moon sparkles this time. Nice. He gave it to us. Very cool. Now, after we've used the head, examine all three of these bulbs to make some flowers bloom and draw some bees in. They kind of resemble the Galaga ships there, the way they were flying. But we get the beehive head. Definitely hold on to this one. Moving forward. Ooh, ow. Give me that head back. Okay. 
And who? Okay, I forgot about these parts. They can be a little nasty. Take your time and you'll be okay though. Oh no! Mr. Pink! Ah, ah, Harry! If the Moon Bear King uses me to stop that clock, we're all... We're all... And for once, Mr. Pink was at a loss for words. The last guardian of the clock tower was in Rooster's clutches, and the Moon Bear King was poised to plunge all the Earth's children into an eternal nightmare. And you saw that trophy we got, a speech for sore ears? That's for listening to everything Mr. Pink had to say. Very, very arduous. But we made it, so let's move on to the next section. That is a very large giraffe topiary. Oh, I've never clicked on it before. I didn't know it was going to do that. Okay, well, continue onward. Kutaro dashed through the verdant labyrinth, determined to free Mr. Pink from the diabolical General Rooster. Indeed, but before we do that... That was creepy, having him fly across the screen. We've got a place to use the beehive head. Get ready for one of the weirdest bonus stages ever. Oh boy. The Moon Bear King? What's he doing here? Uh, as I said, now a sweet little bee is here. Well, this casting is too ridiculous. I completely agree, Picarina. Luckily, the honeybees came to Kutaro's rescue, and he escaped the danger. Now, lunar honeybees are known to sometimes carry moon sparkles back to their hive instead of nectar. By painstakingly purging the hive of the moon sparkles, like so, the bees are able to produce a honey of the purest variety. Mmm, I do love me some honey. What's not to love about nectar the bees found who knows where? and stored in ant-like stomachs, only to vomit it up again so they can mix it with gooey gobs of bee spit. Ugh, what? Have you got something against honey? No, but I can't say I have anything to say for it either. Ooh, okay. Running out of time. I think, though, we're almost at the end. Yep, this is big section. Oh, I am so not going to make this in time. Oh, I was so close! Oh, well that was the very end. I'll finish that one off screen. Now, you'll see here, there's a ladybug. But, you're gonna wanna find all three Look of them the and bugs. check them out. Bees too! And, moving onward. More hedge maze action Quickly, going Ed, on. You must emancipate me, uh, which, as you know, more or less derived from Latin, meaning deliver from the hands of. Edest, you must free me from General Rooster's talons. Uh, he doesn't have hands, and thereby render me liberated. Yes. Now, <laughs> uh, freedom may seem subjective, uh, however. You don't have to hang around and listen to hey. him. It came to life! Oh, get the ladybug right above you, and then use the elephant head. The land of time's Topiary Garden was a magical place. There we go. This pauses at a moment, so we at least have a moment to think. Yeah, you don't have to listen to everything Mr. Pink says now, but he's still kind of fun to listen to. Slam down on the button. Oh, I might be getting hurt. And... No! Oh. Moon sparkles! A bunch of them! So yeah, make sure you grab that ladybug there above the elephant, because it goes by quick. Hey, you Gats, can't have. move any faster. I am in trouble, you know. I mean, you've got stumpy appendages, but a bit of urgency ought to compensate for walking right. Unless you've already written me off as a disposable character. Yes, well, I have a few things to say about that. Oh my gosh! Talk, talk, talk! Kataro's gonna ditch you if you don't stop polluting the air with your noise. Nobody likes a wise-cracking motor mouse who flies around and tells people what to do! Trust me, I deal with people like that all the time! 
I have a feeling our beloved audience knows exactly what Picarina is talking about. Yeah, I don't think she realizes how much of a motormouth she is. Anyway, we got two grubs there, and I lost a head because I slammed right into some vines. But check the third ladybug for ladybug head. I'm going to save that for now, but head on downwards, and we'll keep continuing on through the maze. Thankfully, the elephant waited for us. I love that he's got this giant hole on because we the did the roulette. Labyrinth, Kutaro dashed as Mr. Pink. What in blazes is taking so long? It's your fault I'm even in this predicament, you and your snip, snip, snip. Why don't I slice up Mr. Pink's disguise and ruin everything and destroy the world because I feel like it? Now, coming up, we're going to get a new head that we'll be able to use right away. I actually can't remember if the characters will be talking at the time, so I'm just going to use it as soon as it's available. Move on to the next section, and... The garden stretched on endlessly. I see we've upgraded to dinosaurs. A triceratops. Ooh, hurry, trim that hedge. Yes, a very interesting looking topiary. Well, Picarina doesn't have any shears, so nothing we could do. Except... Yes! Kutano found himself astride a triceratops. Second only to the T-Rex on the dinosaur top 40. There's a top 40? Yes, Whoa, use the triceratops head. And, and multiplied. Mixed up. Because in the end, you need to rescue me, and that means you have to hurry! <laughs> Do you see what I did there? Would you just shut up while Kataro hooks you loose? You can actually grab General Alas, Rooster. the twisted topiary topography was making Mr. Pink's rescue rather difficult. Yep, and doesn't really seem to do much, but we finish up this area, so... Gonna move along and pass through the gate. Have a spot of tea, hun. In fact, have the whole leopard. Don't be ridiculous. Leopard spots aren't made of tea. They're made of a special pigmentation that, uh, in actual fact, is... Oh, more and more talking. And is this... There's a black cat hanging here. He does not do much. I guess if you check him, he wanders off. Okay. Move onward through this crazy tea party. Kutaro found himself an unwilling guest at General Rooster's afternoon tea. But there was no time to sit back and nibble on pastries. He had to leap from table to table just to keep up with his host. Another black cat. I have never noticed them before. Don't let the tea get cold. You have all the time in the world! Oh yeah, tons. Kutaro sheared a path along General Rooster's trail of feathers and moved to the next table. It's important at these sorts of functions to make the rounds and socialize a bit. One can't be rude and keep to oneself. Now, cut along these and you'll see up above us a hundred sparkle. Just use the boost cut and it's pretty easy to get to. Keep going, following along with General Rooster's feathers. And here, keep cutting in a circle. Don't leave the area. Just cut around and around. We got the teacup head. Now you can move onward. And we got the trophy, sheer genius. Biscuits and fruit, cold cuts and scones. It all looked scrumptious. But a party is more than just eating. All right, and we've arrived here at this. Now, before we want to slam this, you actually want to move, I believe, do I use the teacup action around here? I get a little confused with this section. Just a second. Okay, sorry about that cut. Yeah, I want to double check where I am here. And Sheer Genius, as I thought, is making 10,000 cuts with Calibris. You will definitely get this naturally as you go. So here we go. Slam down from way on high, higher than we needed. Remember, it's proper to give up your seats for the elderly and people who need uh, them. Yeah, I'm not so sure my grandma would want this chair. And here, 
Before you slam that bush, use the teacup head. Let's see what happens. Another roulette. We're getting a lot of them here. Give me something good. Well, I hit it while it was on the moon sparkles, but I doubt that's what it's going to give me. Oh, no, it did. Oh, thank you, tea kettle. I didn't need them, but better than something trying to kill me, I suppose. Now let's jump up higher Ooh, and let's go right. That side looks yummy. Jump, jump! Maybe the left would have been easier. General Rooster flapped away disdainfully. Every I did that on purpose. Yes, I did. Uh, actually, to be honest, I did do it on purpose because I want to see what she says when we go to the left side. I've never taken the left. She Remember, always wants to go right. It's proper to give up your seats for the elderly and people who need them. Yeah, I'm not so sure my grand. Oh, I can't take it anymore. Can't we crash for just one second? No, we cannot crash. This time, go left. Ooh, let's go right. That side looks yummy. I said go right. Oh, look at these twists and turns. Okay, so General left is Rooster safer. General flapped away disdainfully every time Kutaro got close. But the trail of feathers was leading our hero ever closer to the clock tower. This looks ominous. We're going to a clock tower here. Let's see what's beyond the yellow gate. With his cute little teacup head. Kutaro's wild rooster chase had led him to Mr. Pink's place of employment. One magical clock tower at the heart of the land of time. The insides of the tower were stuffed with enormous, intricate gears. Do they really need this many? They probably don't need quite this many. Now this next section is kind of long, so we're actually going to cut this episode off here. It'll be a little shorter, but I feel like if we keep going, it'll either be a little short episode or way too long. So the clock tower will just simply have to wait for next time. We have freed Mr. Pink, only to have him get captured. Now we've got to follow him and General Rooster. See if we can't take out the rooster and prevent all the children's dreams from turning into nightmares. And that'll happen next time. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to click like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter. I'll see you guys next time.